the home water can actually change it. You can make the remote control your temperature sensor. It has a feature called the follow me mode, and I'll get into that when we get into the remote control. But at least for the point of conversation now, the thermistor, your temperature sensor, is in the evaporator. That's the point where we're sensing room temperature. The inverter reacts to both indoor and outdoor temperature fluctuations by adjusting the compressor speed to meet cooling and heating loads, optimizing energy usage. Inverter provides superior energy efficiency and performance. Okay, so let's do a little ductless inverter versus ducted system comparison. With your typical ducted system, regardless of zoning, the compressor operates at maximum speed. Gentlemen, will you give me this? The compressor connected to this system knows two things, does it not? It knows on and off. It's all, it knows nothing in between. It knows on and off. You give me that? Massive sheet metal ducting absorbs large quantities of energy. In this case, is heat, and that's worse when the ducts are in the attic. Well, the ducts are always in the attic in New York and New Jersey. You go to Vegas, or you go down to the Carolinas, and the ducts can literally be in the ground, right? Because they build on slab. And that's why they develop, developed that high-density polyethylene uh, underground ducting stuff. Have you seen that? And that's coming into our world, too. But um, usually, if not always, the ducts are in attics. Or, like in this case, above a drop ceiling. It's not conditioned. That gets hot as heck up there. Zoning is done with dampers controlled by wall-mounted thermostats. The noise of the fan blower is through, heard throughout the whole system. Guys, if this system comes on while we're working here tonight, we're going to know it. And it's no knock on the system. It's a perfectly good system, but it's the nature of the beast, is it not? That fan comes on, we're going to hear it. The metering device in these systems are purely mechanical. They're TXVs. Again, they're set at the factory and they can't react once you guys put them into play. But in the inverter ductless world, the compressor operates at the necessary speed for zoning. There is no sheet metal, so there are no duct losses. Zoning controls through highly accurate thermistors, not wall-mounted thermostats. The metering device is electronic, not mechanical, and they are simple to install. I'll prove that to you because we're going to essentially install one tonight. Four evaporators on one single outdoor unit. Guys, in the Conventional world, that compressor runs at 3,600 RPM or at zero. Again, on or off, that's all it knows. Needs to overcome pressure, inertia, and operate at maximum speed. Think about how long your automobile engine would run under those same circumstances. Guys, it's like in two hours from now when I release you back into the world. It's as if I would give you the instructions that on your way home tonight or back to your shop, when you turn on your truck, I want you to put the pedal to the metal. I mean the gas pedal literally to the floor and you never let up. You only operate the brake to slow down for curves or come to a stop. But at the same time, you never let up on the gas. Now some of you drive that way. I've seen <laughs> he drives that way. It's fun for about 15 minutes, isn't it? But then you kind of realize the damage you're doing. But these things run under those conditions 24-7, 365. Consistently draws high current, poor power factors. The condenser fan runs at maximum speed. Now you can argue, and feel free to argue with me at any point. You can argue that there's two-stage equipment, no question. But as soon as that equipment hits second stage, you're hearing that fan, gentlemen. Heat, heat transfer is not optimal, and necessary subcooling is not assured. In the inverter ductless world, again, the motor starts at the minimum speed, so we're not starting at 3600 RPM and working our way down. We start at the lowest RPM and work our way up, and that ensures the longevity of the compressor. It draws the current to match the load. The condenser fan speed also matches the need for heat projection. Heat transfer is optimized, proper subcooling is assured, and the fans are very, very quiet. Gentlemen, we make for great neighbors because our outdoor equipment is really, really quiet. In fact, I'm going to do something for you tonight that most manufacturers would cringe if you asked for this information. I'm going to give you specific decibel levels for both our outdoor units and our indoor units. Now, I know that may or may not be of interest to you. Unless you're a sound engineer, a decibel level may be meaningless to you. So I'm also going to give you some environmental sounds. 
so you have something to compare it to. And I think I'm going to blow you away with how quiet these systems are. Mm -hmm. Guys, with ducted systems, they have typical losses of anywhere from 25 to 40 percent. And that's not me telling you that. That's the Department of Energy installation. <laughs> You've been, you've been to this job. Hopefully, hopefully you haven't installed this job. But you've been to this job. Guys, again, that's the Department of Energy giving you these numbers. In fact, ASHRAE will tell you that it's 45% is lost before it ever gets here. 45% of your heating and cooling input are lost before it ever gets to the register. Now, gentlemen, I'm not suggesting that's on systems that you would install tomorrow. Guys, if you're doing a new construction job and, and you're creating a, a ducted system from the get-go, of course you're going to seal the seams and you're going to have R8 on the plenum. You're going to do everything right. But this, what you're seeing here and you're all giggling about, is really the real world, right? That's the existing systems that were built in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. And that's the majority of what you're dealing with, right? Today. <laughs> Guys, there are losses through conduction, hot addicts, hot addicts and cold addicts, uninsulated supplies and returns. There's air leakage through improper connections, holes, or untaped seams. In fact, if all Lady Gillikite has you install a 90% condensing furnace with an AC coil, but you do nothing to the ducted system, her 90% furnace now just went through, uh, went down to a delivered efficiency of 63%, right? I mean, it's simple math, gentlemen. 37 cents of every dollar that she's putting into heating and cooling is going down the proverbial drain. It's not just a matter of changing equipment. The ducts have to be addressed as well. And that very, very rarely happens. Guys, inducted systems, often oversized equipment, is required to compensate for these drastic losses. They also create hot and cold areas within the home. Humidity, dust, mold from the attic and radon from a crawl space or a garage or a basement can actually be drawn into the living area through a ducted system. This creates indoor air quality issues. You know, our homeowners are becoming very savvy, not only about what they're breathing outside the house, but what they're breathing inside the house as well. These systems, ducted systems...